Hey everyone, welcome back into the Sports Fanatic News Hockey Show as we're back for another NHL team preview. As you can see behind me, we're going to do the Calgary Flames today. I'm Joe Borick, joined by two very special guests, Steel Flyers and Pirlo Wisdom. How are you two gentlemen doing today? Doing great, man. Doing great. Doing well. Well, then let's get uh, right into it. The Flames, of course, finished 36-27-7 last year. Uh, we're able to get into the creative playoff format. We had and um, put up a fight. Um, they just had some limitations on their team that they hope to have addressed this year in the offseason that we will get into. And the big guy is the first guy we'll get into is the addition of Jacob Markstrom in net, um, adding now to having David Riddich, who's definitely a good 1B, but has been shaky as a starter. I would definitely say is a good backup, though, where Markstrom's been a good starter slash platoon goalie his entire career up until the last about year and a half, when at the end of Two seasons ago, the second half, he started emerging. And then last year, he really took off, obviously. And that's what got him this contract. So what do you guys think of the Markstrom signing? I'll start with Pirlo on this one. Um, I'm going – it's rich. <laughs> and it, it kind of reeks of desperation in a way. Um. I'm rooting for Jacob Markstrom. I, I've I've liked him ever since I picked him up for Florida. Um, where, by the way, a lot of people forget that that was who they got back for. One of the people they got back for uh, Luongo uh, when they traded him to Florida was Jacob Markstrom. In fact, it's what held up that deal. Uh, they wouldn't trade they wouldn't trade Luongo to Florida until Jacob Markstrom was part of the deal. Uh, that being Vancouver that did that. Um, so. I mean, it's been a long road for, for Jacob, and he's certainly come a long way, but he's only had one really, really, really good year. And they give him a five-year, $6 million contract. Is it five or six? Was it six years? It's until the end of 25, 26. Yeah, uh, a long contract. Six years. <laughs> six years until yeah, he's with, 36 With years a no-movement clause. Uh, yeah, no-movement clause. I mean, they gave everything. They backed up the truck. For uh, <laughs> for him uh, in a year when when you know people were going for fairly cheap, so they are putting all their marbles mm. here on Jacob Markstrom to be able to be their number one goaltender for a while. You, uh, and now you have David Riddich. I think D David Riddich might have taken a a huge uh, sigh of relief because, as you were saying, Joe, it just appeared that when David was given the reins. Uh, mentally he just couldn't handle it and now especially in the playoffs my gosh the playoffs this year might have been some of the worst goaltending I've seen by a goaltender for quite some time mm, yeah when they put David scary. Riddich in there to be a starter so mm -hmm. uh I I'm here nor there I gotta see I just think it's pretty risky that's my that's my lean on that yeah, yeah, I think Markstrom's been um, in a spot where last year he really took off, but he was at a consistent 9-12 the two years before in his save percentage and in the 270s and goals again. So he was around the same where this year he just kind of made, I think, more flashy saves and more key contributions. His save percentage went up to a 918 from a 912. So that puts you in the elite of the elite compared to just the good category um, of what he was. So that's what he has to stay at, though, for six million. You're going to want him to stay in the top tier or not just a, as a good goaltender because you can pay any good goaltender four million dollars compared to six million dollars i think that's part of the key isn't it steel wouldn't you say staying as the top notch guy well one first of, the of all ones? yeah first of all i'd say thank you very much for having me on man it's always a pleasure being with the, the two pros in the know so please hit the like and subscribe and follow these guys because they're though they will point you in the right direction i think the markstrom deal was a good thing for them look uh, Hoboden signed for a little bit less than that. Not that much less, but a little bit less. And they pretty much yeah, have comparative numbers. Yeah. No, his I think his was closer to five, I thought. 
it still wasn't that much more yeah. or that much less than this. And they're relatively compared. I think. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah, All right. That was this was only three seven. Okay. I thought it was oh, okay. Five. All right. Well, okay. Either way, this is a huge upgrade from Cam Talbot. No matter what you slice. Okay. I don't care. This is a, a major upgrade, I believe. With, I do agree with what you guys said, uh, uh, especially about Markstrom coming in. It is a little bit of a rich contract, but in the grand scheme of things, he's not making top tier money, right? He's not getting the eight or nine million, right? Laner yeah. got five million for his deal and signed signed for almost the same year years, right? So and and he did pretty good. So look, they're paying for the goalie. They're paying for him to be the guy. They're paying for him to to you know what I'm saying exactly with what you said, Joe. They're paying for him to be the guy, and and Perlo, yeah, you're right. They backed up the truck six million dollars, no movement clause. So he's going to be their protected goalie moving forward. This is mm-hmm. who yeah. they're going to be. This is who they're going to be with moving forward. Mm-hmm. So as far as the question is whether or not Markstrom is going to be a, a good goalie for them, I think he's going to work out okay. I think he's going to work out okay. I think with Riddich back there not feeling that pressure now that he's not going to have to be the number one guy to carry the team, right? Because Cam Talbot was was – very up and down, and especially within the playoffs, did not play very well. And then suddenly it was like, well, here you go. Here you, you know, throw you into the fire. And I, that's just kind of where I'm at with that. I think this is a pretty decent tandem. It takes the, well, what do you think about Calgary moving forward? It takes that, well, do you worry about the goalie because they lost Cam Talbot? Well, no, they brought in Jacob Markstrom. Okay, well, you could check that off of what you have to worry about with Calgary going forward. Yeah, yeah, that 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 makes sense. Um, I think they just need him. He's going to be good. I, I think Jacob Markstrom is always going to be a good goalie. It's just for the amount you paid him in the COVID year, you're yeah. going to want him to stay as a top seven probably in the league for that um, salary um, around that level so i think he's going to be good though i think the biggest um question marks for them is answered as you said where their thing is some teams we look at and they have a young goalie that you point to tyler parsons is not i believe that's his name tyler um is not a guy like that and he's a guy that might develop into a backup role player and then Dustin Wolf is nowhere close to the NHL and was a six-round pick that's playing for Team USA right now and is out there with Spencer Knight as their other right. uh, goaltender. Um, so they don't have anybody that you're pointing to is that this guy's going to be ready in the next two years. So they got a guy that they know is going to be here for a while. And then if this Dustin Wolf kid becomes a great late-round pick, because goaltenders are – funny you get do draft a lot of good late roll late round ones then you have even more uh, riches there so uh that's a good problem to have so i do think it was a good move uh i do s- agree and see what people are saying though that it might be a little rich but if it all works out i don't think anyone in the end is going to be pointing to his salary but i think the big key um we have with the calgary flames that's a question mark is their defense and when you brought in guy a guy like Christopher Tenev who's a good defenseman but never he was undrafted though so what he's become is obviously for an undrafted guy would probably be quote unquote really good because he's undrafted but that's in comparing him to undrafted people overall he's just a good NHL defenseman that gets the job done so for them, he's more of a definite top three, where I feel like he's a guy that should be more of a four through six on your roster. But coming in, if Noah Hannafin doesn't play up to snuff and say um, a guy like Valamaki and Shillington struggle out of the gates in camp, you would have to have Tanev then in your top. He's a potential top three. I think that's why their defense – is the biggest question mark. I start with steel on this, but would you agree that that's probably oh, yeah. the biggest question mark? Yeah. Coming in? Mm-hmm. You, you, you got, um, 
some young guys coming in that you're putting a lot of pressure on right away to be the top six guys. Okay. The, the top, the top pairings. Okay. And, and they're young. And, and I agree with you. If Noah can't, can't pull it out, then they're going to have to have some of those guys to be able to step in. You know what I mean? And Tanif could be that guy. And, and we also talked about um, Anderson too, um, playing a little bit above his years as well too, being only 24 years old. And, and, and this is where I think if, if they falter, if they're if they're young guns that they have coming up falter and they're not able to put it together on defense, it's not going to matter how good Markstrom's going to be, because this is exactly what you said, um, Professor Joe. This is the key right here. I think they have plenty of offense. I think they have plenty of creativity. Um, I think they finally now have a dependable backstop in in Markstrom. This is the only thing I think that stands out as a potential weakness for Calgary. Yeah, because Giordano has been playing very well. He obviously won a Norris in a latter um, age of a career that many guys and don't. He's 37, he's you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, he's not getting any younger. Um, Shilinton really showed up as a – think to a more of a level than they thought. So you would have to have that continue. He was – a more of a surprise guy to being able to potentially now be a definite top three to develop one before. I think he was more your, this guy's going to be a solid guy that can play. Yeah. 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 That's, that's Uh, the other thing too. That needs to continue where the big question mark that I think um, is answered is going to be answered in Valamaki. I do believe in that kid. Uh, He's a point per game now on loan. Um, over in the league and played pretty well when he came up. So I think he's likely to be in your top three, which then Shilington being in your top four would really depend on how Noah Hannafin plays uh, for yeah. Calgary. And if yeah. he start playing better, who's the biggest question mark on their defense, in my opinion, because he's got all that untapped skill when Carolina drafted him and just never has been able to tap it. Uh, so if, he's able to finally figure that out, then they definitely have a deeper defense. But what are your thoughts on the Calgary Flames defense, Pirlo? Um, it's not great. <laughs> defense is like a, a whole lot of I loves and a whole lot of I really don't likes. Uh, not a whole lot, but it's like 50-50. I love, love, love Rasmus Anderson. I like Mark Giordano. I love him, but... I mean, like you said, he's 37 years old. How much is he fall, going to be following off here? Noah Hannafin has disappointed me so greatly in this organization. <laughs> I really thought Noah Hannafin was going to be way better than what he has become so far. He is only 23, but his he, he doesn't look like he's improving. In fact, he looks like he's regressing every year. This could be really dangerous on defense for them. When you just mentioned Oliver Shillington, who was a second – I believe a second round pick and has progressed and, and, and is really good skater gets the puck out of the zone. Well, but defensively he has a lot of issues still in his game. I am not a fan of Christopher Tanev. I think he's overrated. Um, I think it was a bad contract to give to Christopher Tanev. And I think by the end of it, it's going to look bad. Um, I do believe that you so Mackey is going to de- – I love Yusuf Valamaki. Absolutely love him. Uh, tough kid, plays the way you want to play, can put up offense, all of that. So I think he's going to crush Tana for that for that spot. Um, and uh, so you've got like three really good defensemen and three meh. You know, so – it's 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 a mishmash there. I guess that's the way I wanted to say it. It's a mishmash on deep yeah. <laughs> on their defense there, as far as I'm concerned. And then their signings, maybe Nikita Nesterov is probably you know he played a little bit in Tampa, went over to the KHL, put up some decent numbers. They tried to bring him back. Maybe he's better than I think. I know one thing, Alex Petrovich. He better not be your answer because you're in trouble. No, yeah. They also signed Connor Maki from free agency, who's a decent hockey IQ guy, too. Guys that have some potential, maybe. Yeah. Surprise defenseman that would then give you deeper depth. Yeah, but it's all about 
the upper line guys. And the biggest question mark, I think, remains still as Hannafin, because even if Chris Tanev's a little overrated, he's at least been average. So Hannafin hasn't always been average in the sense of what you expect him to be, where uh, average, like the skill he has, average for him should be like a 25, 30 point guy, where he hasn't even always consistently looked like that, where he sometimes just tweaks or like kind of sprinkles in runs that gets him to that at the end of the year where realistically he hasn't been consistent ever since so that's what i think is going to be big for them but their big thing is going to be rosmus anderson stepping up as the bulk guy because giordano still was our ice leader last year you don't want to keep pounding him out there for extended minutes as he gets older so i think anderson's going to take a bigger leap this year giordano will run a little bit less minutes and then hopefully things fall into place with Vaughn Maki and Shilenton improved his defense, as you mentioned, uh, over the off season and really worked on that part of his game. Uh, Ross Miss Anderson. I love, love, love number one already at 24 years old. I, I totally. Yeah. He's very talking. good in his zone. Yeah. yeah defense. I mean, you know, look, is, yeah. he reminds me of a program. Off a lot. There you go. It take, look, we all know it takes defensive guys a little longer to come around. And especially yeah. if you can that's get one guy. that's that that is this young and is playing well above his their years, you, you know what I mean. So I, I'm with you. I really like this Valamaki kid, six foot two from Finland. I mean, he does play it the right way. He's got some yeah. grit. He's got some, you know, he's he's more than willing to go bang and and all that. And you know, that's that's the kind of thing you want to see. So. Yeah. Smart kid too. Yeah, yeah. So. you know, I think yeah. that he was their first round draft pick in 2017, and he, I I think he's gonna. I I agree. I think he's gonna crush Tanev, and I think he's gonna be more of taking more time away uh, from Jaredonov. You know what I mean? And so or Jaredonov. So I, that's what I think is gonna happen with this a defense. Yep. At least I that's agree. what. At least that's what we can project. At least yeah. that's what we can hope. For I at least so. for Calgary, I think you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I completely agree with that. Um, I think their offense, even with Goudreau still in his not the most happy place, uh, is still in a good spot because you got Goudreau, Monahan, Lindholm, uh, you got Maji Apani probably as your second line guy with Bakalin and Kachuk. Lucic is probably going to move down to the fourth line where he should be or out of the lineup. Um, and then you would have Sam Bennett, Dylan Dubé, and Josh Lievo, probably, who I think is an underrated signing. Lievo is a pretty good ladder round pick that's developed himself into a good bottom six player and a guy that okay. has offensive ability as well in the bottom six that can be a good PK uh, penalty killer for you. So he should be on your third line. And then at the worst, uh, Lucic would be on your fourth with uh, Dominic Simone and probably Derek Ryan, who's a good fourth line center. Um, so I think they got a pretty good lineup there. Uh, it's more you have to have guys like Elias Lenholm keep developing and keep getting better as he has been each year, showing his progression. Uh, then Dylan Dubé has to show out like he did last year. But what are your guys' uh, initial thoughts on their lineup when it comes to offense? I'll start with Pirlo on this one. Um, well, I, I'm not as optimistic as you are. Uh, again, it's almost the same thing. I love, 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 love Matthew Kachuk. Absolutely love him. they got guys on here like some of my favorite in the league right now. And Matthew Kachuk is certainly one of them. Johnny Goudreau's got it. I don't know if he doesn't want to be there or where his head's at on the ice uh recently although i do know that he's been propping up sean monahan for a little bit too long i don't think sean monahan honestly should be a number one center in the league and uh johnny goudreau has propped him up for quite a while and i think it's starting to get frustrating with him not to mention some of the other moves that calgary has made um i saw a lot of frustration in johnny goudreau's game last year um, Elias Lindholm, again, love, 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 love. Great player. You can't not love guys like Elias Lindholm that can do everything, score points, uh, play hard, play defense, all of that stuff like that. Second line, I think Dylan Dubé is going to switch to the left side. Um, 
please do that. No more Move propping up Luchich for the. Yeah, no more propping up Luchich, please for this for this kid. He's he's earned his right to get up there. Are we hitting the stopwatch? Second line, and uh, get. Uh, He'll be he'll be playing with Backlund and Kachuk and Mangiopani will come down and, and str- struggle yeah. with Lu- Lucic and Bennett. Um, Lucic Bennett that line could be a would be a fourth line. Well, on wouldn't Gushin. you think Levo would probably be third line though with Mangiopani? Maybe Levo yeah. could you yeah. could put Levo up there? Yeah, 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 something like that. But the thing is, Mangiopani has played hard. He deserves to get up there in the third That's line. That's why I would put him with Levo, because you're yeah. kind of torturing somebody putting them with Milan Lucic at this yeah, point. Well, yeah, bring Lucic down. I see what um, you're talking sure. about. Yeah, right. Yeah. So bring Lucic down. So you got two fourth lines, kind of. It's it's not the greatest lineup in the world. I think it's been very overrated. I think there's been a lot of team players on this team that haven't put it all together. Now, I will say that um, Jeff Ward did a fantastic job with this team when he took Correct. Over. Yeah, he was And amazing. it's possible that he can get more out of this team yet than I've seen. But right now, I got to see it. I haven't seen it with this team for quite a while. Uh, so that's my on the offense. Yeah, man. Yeah. He, yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, Monaghan's kind of a swing between a second line and first line. I do really like Sean Monaghan, though. He had that 82-point season two seasons ago. Uh Took a little step back last year, but I think he'll be back and doing his thing. I mean, when Goudreau was not putting up as much production, that is going to hurt a guy like uh, you hinted at. But what are your initial thoughts on uh, their offensive output steal? Uh, I'm going to have to agree very much with what Perlo said, especially when it comes to uh, Johnny Hockey. His game was very frustrated last year, and I think that that resonated throughout the entire lineup. Okay, and to be honest with you, they have not addressed that thorn in the paw, if you will. Okay, and until they do, until they address that thorn in the paw, until they either pick it out or whatever they got to do to make everybody all happy. Okay, then I think we're going to have issues no matter what, because if you're. If you're somebody who's not motivated to play as at your very best, like I'm not saying that he's going to be tossing games or anything like that by any stretch of the word. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, I got you. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're not that terribly motivated to be there, then you're not going to be, you know, and, and uh, all the other guys, Manja playing, I, I think is going to be a, a great thing. Uh, I do like the idea of moving Lucic down. I like Backlund coming in. I like Sean Monaghan, too. I think these are some great guys that's for their team. They didn't do that terribly bad last year. I think it's going to be – here's the thing that I think is really going to affect them the most. The fact that they need to take care of Johnny Goudreau, whatever that issue is, I think that needs to be taken care of. And I think the sooner they do that, the better things are going to be for them. Okay? Yeah. The other thing that I think is going to be the big thing with their their offense is where are they going to be playing hockey games this coming season? Because it's going to be based off of who they're playing against, I think. It's going to be based off of how their offense is going to fly. Yeah, well, they're in the old Canada. So. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. So that's going to be a tough road to hoe for them guys. And if they can... I, I do agree with what Perlo with with bringing it with the coach Ward and being able to get a lot out of the team, and I think that he will too be able to get more out of the team. Some of the younger talent coming through. It's going to be interesting to say, but it's I think it's going to be a tough road for Calgary. I think they kind of stay kind of unless they take care of In Johnny Goudreau. Yeah, unless they unless they address the Johnny Goudreau thing, whether he stays and gets taken care of or he's traded or whatever needs to happen for everybody to be happy, then I think the Calgary can move on. But until they take care of that, I, I think they're just going to stay the course and be middle of the road. Yeah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. I think the reason why I think they have a chance to be decent on offense is they've never had – as Pirlo pointed out, the best wingers in their bottom six that actually have some offensive ability, whether it's Dubé or Maggiapani on the third line with Sam Bennett, that gives him someone else with offensive ability. Josh Lievo gives him some, somebody that has, or Dominic Simone, whoever you put on the yeah, third I was line, say, yeah. somebody that has offensive 
ability of a mid-20 points producer. So Sam Bennett, if he can actually be a third-line center in the regular season, too, now strengthens your depth. And I feel like this is his best season to have a chance to do that because he finally has a good third line around him. Where Mm -hmm. before he had, like, Milan Lucic and just some other guy that they would throw in at time. uh, Or, like, a good guy on the one side, but then Lucic just kind of... You brings you have to slow down your lines. Where this year, the reason I think they're better too is with guys they added of Nordstrom, Lievo, and Simone. Uh, Lucic, if they really don't want to, doesn't even have to be in your lineup on a consistent nightly basis because you have Zach Ronaldo who you can just throw in your fourth line who actually knows how to skate. Um, <laughs> and then uh, you have Nordstrom who is pretty much a quicker skating version that's a little bit of a bigger so yeah. uh so i think now they also most gave themselves a security blanket for if lucic is really playing bad they could just bench him at this point with some of the depth bottom sixers they got so i do like that's what i like i do think their top line like Pierre pointed out if monahan doesn't put up like he did more than two years ago yeah that could be a issue but i feel like he's going to go back to being more of his 18 self than his last year so yeah, yeah. we'll wrap this up um by closing out on where we think the team is going to go so i'll start with uh pierlo for this one being in the all canadian division um where do you think the calgary flames are going to end up going by the end of this season second last in the division second last yep We'll do. We'll be doing a Canadian division thing, and uh, that'll be fun. But a little creeper in there, second last in division. I think Calgary is. I, I'm not. I'm not high on Calgary. I, I have. I'm. I haven't been high on their moves. I'm not high on the Chris Tanev move. Uh, I wasn't high on. Uh, I'm uh, like I said. I got to see Noah Hanavan play better, and he's got a long way to go to do that. He probably won't be, shouldn't be in the top four now, and they don't really have anybody much to replace him unless they play Valimaki on the off wing up there. Uh, like you said, I'm not a big fan of their defense. And until I see Johnny Goudreau and those guys putting up the effort and uh, showing the ability that they have possibly in the past, uh, it's that tough Canadian division. And you got to do all this, make all these changes, and become that in a very, very tough decision, division against teams like Montreal that um, have improved greatly. Um, yeah, Toronto it's... has, Oilers have. Vancouver, uh, you could say maybe has not, but I don't think so. Actually, I think there is a lot of, uh, like, for instance, Tanev was a, uh, was a uh, plus by subtraction. So, um, yeah, I think they're in trouble. I really do. I think they're in trouble this year. Yeah, yeah. Um... I think they got put in a very tough spot, obviously, with the whole Canada division. You have um, a team like Montreal that's clearly ascending. You got Edmonton of the Alberta teams that's uh, a notch ahead of if their goaltending can perform pro- ahead of uh, probably where you're at. Um, but I do think beyond those teams, there is an interesting can Toronto perform up to – snuff or will they keep being that team that never performs to their full capacity and what are Vancouver and Winnipeg going to be so I think there's question mark below the top teams which uh realistically coming in should be Toronto was one of them on paper but it's just with how they usually find a way to have a black cat type thing follow their franchise you don't do that but I would say they're going to be a competitive team. Obviously, 28 wins is the uh, middle marker in our 56-game season. I would put Calgary at at least that. I would say they're going to be at least 500. I would say they're probably going to be a low 30-win team, which then might put them in competition for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But that would be my... I would say probably – I would say they're at least going to be 500, but I have a more feeling they'll have a 32, 33, uh, with 34 probably as your ceiling coming in because your defense is the biggest question for me where they're going to have to perform more up to snuff and the Hannafins of the world um, are going to need to really take a next step and Tanev's going to have to fall into place on his uh, third defensive line 
with uh, Valamaki stepping up as well, which I think will happen. It's more how will other guys do, like Shilinton continue to develop, will Tanev be able to come in and be worth that contract? Uh, that's why I feel they're going to be there until I proven differently on their defense. What do you think, Steele? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, so you're you're thinking that they're going to get a little bit better than what they were last year because based off of the number of games that they played last year and the number of wins they had and what you're projecting for them to have wins this year. So you're projecting them to be a slightly uh, better than what they were last year. Well, I'm projecting them to only be about five. That would be about five okay. to six over 500 because 28 to 500 more. Okay, so, okay, okay. I got you, got you. Yeah, right, I just so, wanted to be clear. Yeah. I don't uh, – yeah, I'm kind of with Perlo on this. Look, if their defense holds, if they take if they take care of Johnny Goudreau or whatever that issue is and, and take care of that, whether he needs to be out or he's staying or whatever the case is, then I don't see them even getting to 500. I really just don't. I see them taking a step back unless their defense can hold and unless they can take care of their Johnny Goudreau issue. They did address their goalie situation. They are bringing in some more talent. Um, That's I why can I think see, they're you know, I, Yeah, I, I agree. Though. I, I can see, like, where you would say they would be above 500. I just... And until I see some things, like the first 10 or 15 games, okay, if they come out of the gates in the first 10 or 15 games and say after the first 10 games and they're 3-7, and seven, then it's going to probably be a long year for them because they yeah. haven't fixed but things. But on the flip side, if they're 7-3, and three, yeah. But right, okay. exactly, exactly. So I, I'm going to put them below 500, but that's subject why, to change. Yeah, that's why I think the Canadian division is up for opening because – Vancouver now um, has two a new goalie situation there, and you have to see how that comes into. And then Winnipeg, like, I think, is going to be down there too. And Winnipeg. I think you're going to see Toronto. Yeah, yeah I think you're going to see Toronto is going to step up. I'm going to be interested to see what's going to happen with Montreal because they've had a lot of turnover. So I'm going to be interested well, to I see. Think Toronto does that. We'll leave that for that video. But their division right. does that. They do that to themselves because Anderson's in trade rumors all the time when he's actually a pretty good right. goalie. But, so. I mean, because of what Perlo said, that we're going to have a shortened camp. We're not going to have as much time now with the teams being able to gel together. There's no preseason game. So if you've had a lot of turnover on your team, then I think that's drastically going to affect your first 10 or 15 games. So if you've had a lot that of turnover – on your team, then it's going to take you those first 10 games to try to get everybody on the same page. Yeah. That makes sense. Right. Like where teams that haven't had a lot of turnover, I think are going to be able to come out of the gates better and faster and have a better run at, at things. So that's what I think is going to happen here with Calgary. I think you're right. They got put in a bad spot because they're in the all Canadian division. And I think they're going to be down there with Winnipeg, uh, you know, down at that end. So that's just kind of how I feel. Gotcha. So uh, for uh, Steele and Pirlo, they have them a little bit below 500. I just think when you have really good goaltending with the top two lines that I like enough, you're going to be at at least 500 usually. That's this just just want to point one thing take. out. Talbot actually had better numbers than Markstrom last year. In, the, in 28. Yeah, it is yeah. an almost uh, game. Uh, Total, so it depends. I'm on. not sold on Markstrom, as you can tell. So, anyways, <laughs> yeah, this has been uh, our full uh, 42, as Pirlo would say. Um, this has been the Sports Fanatic News NHL Team Preview Calgary Flames edition. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everyone, and have a happy holidays. Peace out. Yeah.